good morning and welcome to the third and the last webinar in the series ukraine fights on one year later my name is liladhar pegse and i am the librarian for slavic eastern european and eurasian studies at the uc berkeley library before we actually start the webinar um, i would like to acknowledge that uc berkeley sits on the territory of Huichin, ancestral and unceded land of the Chochenyo speaking Oholone people, who are the successors of the historic and sovereign Verona band of Alameda County. This land was continuous and continues to be of great importance to Muh Vekmuh Ohlone tribe and other familial descendants of the Verona brand. And all of us have benefited at UC Berkeley uh, by uh, using the resources of this land. Uh, having said that, uh, I would like to also thank Institute of Slavic, Eastern European and Eurasian Studies, UC Berkeley Library, uh, my colleagues here at the library who have made this webinar possible. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Andy Spencer of University of Wisconsin-Madison, uh, Slavic librarian, and Ol Olha Alesic of Uri at Harvard, who have generously uh, agreed at the last minute to help out with the webinar. They are the part and parcel of our uh, organizing committee. They have been instrumental in motivating me to do these webinars. Lastly, I want to thank all our Ukrainian librarian colleagues, Aksana, Anastasia, and Katya for finding time uh, under constraints, under tragic situation, but staying positive and being here and telling us about their stories. With this, I will hand over webinars moderation uh, introduction to uh, Andy Spencer, my colleague. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Lilidar. So we are very pleased and very honored to have three very distinguished Ukrainian librarians to speak to us this morning. Uh, firstly, will be Oksana Bruy. Uh, president of the Ukrainian Library Association and Library Director at the Igor Sikorsky Kiev uh, Polytechnic Institute. Speaking second will be Anastasia Litashova, Deputy Director of the Luhansk Regional Universal Scientific Library. And speaking third will be Katarina Skomarovska, uh, who is the head of the Center Window on America at the Venitsa Regional Universal Scientific Library named after V. Otomanovsky. Uh, so please welcome all three of our speakers. Thank you very much. Uh, Oksana, it's, uh, it's over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. Vitaio. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to say thank you to Lidhar, Olva, and Andy, and all uh, American colleagues for your support. Thank you very much. Um, I'll share my presentation. Sorry. Uh, uh, one year ago, we met with you at the library of the Berkeley University. I'm happy to be here again and tell you about Ukraine, about Ukrainian uh, librarians, Ukrainian libraries, uh, and tell you how we live and uh, what we do uh, now. Um, now, the everyday life of each Ukrainian is a line of air raid sirens throughout Ukraine. Um, currently, there is no place in Ukraine that is completely safe because uh, Russia is bombing everywhere and every day. And uh, there is a clear understanding that this war is terrible, of course. Um, I'd like to present you some general statistics and those numbers are horrible. 
Um, 19 million of Ukrainians uh, have been forced to leave their homes and uh, become refugees. Uh, Two million Ukrainians, uh, including children, uh, are departed to Russia. Uh, more than uh, 8,000 civilians were killed, uh, including uh, children. Sorry. The Russians uh, say that uh, they came to Ukraine to demilitarize and uh, liberate us from the Nazis. Instead, they are destroying civilians. Uh, thousands of destroyed buildings, hospitals, museums, publishing houses, uh, uh, hundreds of destroyed schools, uh, universities, uh, libraries. Um, and some details about our libraries. This is statistics as of the end of 2021. Uh, the new accurate statistics uh, will be available, uh, available in June uh, this year. But uh, now uh, we know about more than 500 public and university libraries which are damaged and destroyed. Unfortunately, the number of such libraries increases every day. Uh, among uh, the national and state libraries, there are three libraries. Also more than uh, 25 university libraries are uh, damaged and destroyed. According uh, uh, to Ministry of Education and Science, uh, more than 3,000 educational institutions were uh, damaged. Um, and uh, about uh, 300 of them were completely destroyed. Since uh, every school has a library, we can correlate these numbers with uh, school libraries. Uh, in uh, 2022, the National Library of Ukraine uh, conducted an online survey of uh, public libraries. The results uh, are on the slide. Uh, many libraries also lost their collections, computing and technical equipment uh, and furniture, etc. Uh, many different uh, things. In the occupied territories, the Russians uh, delete uh, Ukrainian books and even Ukrainian translations of foreign authors. But above all, uh, they remote historical uh, literature and fiction that do not um, coincide with the postulates uh, of Kremlin propaganda. Uh, now Ukrainian libraries have many, many challenges. Of course, first of all, there are the challenges for each Ukrainian, uh, but the libraries also have some specific challenges. Uh, Russia scares us uh, with missiles but they don't understand, I think, that every time when they destroy one more library, we only clench our fists and work harder for our victory. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, how Ukrainian librarians live and what we do after February 24th. Our font, um, uh, unfortunately, many libraries were destroyed and damaged. Many libraries were closed, in particular in small towns. 
but in regions uh, where uh, there are no active hostilities, uh, libraries work uh, as usual, and they are working especially hard. Of course, uh, libraries provide services both physically and remotely. Um, Maybe it's hard to believe, but now uh, in Ukraine, uh, libraries aren't closed only. Some destroyed and damaged libraries were repaired and uh, even opened new ones. Because in local communities, the libraries are centers of the people's activity. Uh, sometimes a library is the only place uh, where the internet is. Very shortly about what is in our libraries uh, yet. Um, the bomb shelters are located in many libraries in different cities uh, across uh, Ukraine. Uh, the libraries are the logistic centers for an internally displaced person. Uh, pupils learn on the special platform all Ukrainian online school in the libraries. In libraries, there are also uh, psychological services that help people overcome the stresses of war. Uh, librarians conduct training on the basic of information and media uh, literacy. Now, uh, libraries also work actively uh, on digital education of people. Many years, our libraries have been places where people improve their mastery of foreign languages. Of course, English is the, uh, the most popular, but uh, last year, this situation changed. In Ukraine, many people speak Russian, you know, uh, in everyday life. Uh, for the past uh, 30 years, a lot of libraries have been offering their users Ukrainian language courses and speaking clubs. After February 24th, the demand of these services increased significantly. Many Russian-speaking people refused to use the Russian language. So more and more libraries are expanding their services uh, specifically on the study of Ukrainian language. In addition, librarians are active in volunteering, of course. Uh, my colleagues will speak more about how our libraries work now just later. I want to say a few words about support from our foreign uh, colleagues. Uh, these difficult times uh, have shown that the library community has no borders. From the first days, we felt incredible support from our colleagues from all over the world. We have been supported by international professional organization. Uh, library associations of different countries. National university and public libraries uh, of many countries. And uh, we are very grateful to everyone who stands by us and helps us in our struggle for freedom and independence. It's very important for us, really. Uh, the Charitable Financial Assistance Program for libraries and librarians affected by the Russian-Ukrainian war was launched by the American Library Association in collaboration with the Ukrainian Library Association. The LA Ukraine uh, Library Relief Fund is gathering donations for the Ukrainian library community as they face the challenges of war. Um, at the moment, uh, uh, 18 uh, Ukrainian libraries received um, uh, 
50,000 each for their needs uh, from this uh, fund. They will uh, repair their, their buildings, buy new books and equipments, uh, etc. etc. During all this time, we and our colleagues made dozens of publications and interviews about Ukraine and Ukrainian libraries in foreign media and on internet resources. Uh, we are thankful for our colleagues for the opportunity to speak at the big and small international events. Uh, today I'm here, uh, 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 my colleagues uh, are here, and uh, many thanks for that. Uh, saving library collections and cultural heritage is one of the most important objectives which we realize together with uh, the world community. And uh, now we work to create the National Digital Library of Ukraine. The project is coordinated by the Ukrainian Library Association and is uh, implemented uh, um, under the uh, auspices of the Ministry of Culture, of course, uh, with uh, the financial support of UNESCO and in cooperation with IFLA and SUCHO. Uh, from February uh, of last year until now, colleagues from many countries often ask me uh, in different way, how can we help you? Uh, how can we help Ukrainian librarians, Ukrainian libraries? Uh, my answers are, please uh, ban all relations with Russian librarians, libraries, and library association. It is the first. Please bring the through about uh, the Russian-Ukrainian war to the world, and please donate for Ukrainian libraries and librarians. We are very thankful for all of you uh, for your support of Ukraine, Ukrainian libraries and Ukrainian librarians. We really appreciate it. Um, now we have one great common dream. This dream is victory, of course, all together and uh, everyone in our place. We do everything possible to bring victory closer. And we have any doubt that we will win. It's true. Uh, we believe we'll win and live in free and great European Ukraine. Thank you. Дякую. This life from Ukraine. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Oksana, for your presentation and um, giving us a synopsis of all that has happened uh, over the past year and more. Uh, thank you for staying positive and staying the course. Uh, of course, you have the international support in your work. Um, and I would like to then invite our next speaker uh, to start presenting. And we will answer all your questions uh, towards the end. So please type them in, um, in the questions and answers facets. Uh, I was asked, just to a, a brief note, I was asked if this webinar will be made uh, available for public consumption. Um, I wish I could give you the concrete answers now, but I'm wait, waiting for some funding to make it uh, Americans with Disabilities Act compliant. Uh, if and when I get that funding, I will of course release it to the, uh, to the public to view. Um, thank you for your patience as I navigate uh, the bureaucratic uh, and correctly procedural uh, manner in which the university deals with these issues. Thank you so much. Okay, I think Anastasia is next.
Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Anastasia Litashova. Uh, I'm a deputy of the director of Lugansk Regional Universal Library, and uh, also uh, I'm a vice chairman of uh, your section of uh, Ukrainian Library Association. And uh, I, today I want to talk about uh, Ukrainian public libraries and uh, about uh, our, uh, my native library. Uh, and uh, after uh, the 21st of February, all, all Ukrainian people uh, woke up in new reality, and uh, it was horrible and dangerous, uh, but uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's why the, all Ukrainian public libraries in addition to their traditional functions, uh, have introduced non-conversation activities and joined the struggle against the enemy. Uh, and uh, uh, at first, all librarians start to um, make um, varying camouflage nets and together in the hundreds of volunteers to make uh, these nets. A groups of librarians made uh, tra trench candles for troops on front line, uh, and uh, also librarians uh, are actively involved, uh, involved in volunteering. Uh, librarians on, on organizing fundraising and, and gathering uh, items to support the Ukrainian military and migrants, uh, provide assistance with finding housing and accommodation in humanitarian centers. Uh, such events take place in both small and large libraries and uh, this, uh, this is a uh, Rivne Yost Library. Uh, they um, make a volunteering hub, uh, make an improvised uh, workshop for making uh, some uh, clothes and um, also play guards for children and youth. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, some librarians um, make delicious for soldiers. Uh, for uh, frontline, and uh, uh, today I want to um, uh, I want to speak to my native uh, library uh, about Good Library. Uh, it's uh, our brand uh, known uh, on Ukraine, and uh, many Ukrainian uh, librarians know uh, us um, like uh, Good Library. Uh, Lugansk Regional Library was founded in 1997. Uh, he had, uh, we had uh, uh, our six-store building for stories up and two stories on the ground. Uh, the library uh, work over a, a downtown uh, of Lugansk city. And our first uh, uh, director uh, uh, was uh, a 70-year-old um, woman and one day armed Russian in vendors uh, come to her office uh, with uh, a K, uh, lay weapons on a table and tell her that uh, she will do that they say. And uh, after that, she leaves the library ta taking only statutory documents and uh, stamp. Uh, after um, uh, the start of the Ukrainian uh, war in Ukraine in 2014, uh, all, uh, a lot of Ukrainian people left uh, her homes and uh, uh, occupied territory just uh, like our uh, library did. Uh, when we finally uh, opened a new space, um, our press center and Ukrainian Library Association um, made a lot of noise online and we start to quickly assemble a new collection of books uh, sent off, uh, to us uh, by Ukrainian authors, uh, publishing houses and just uh, organized uh, citizens. It's our team, it's our um, smart uh, part of team. Uh, in Starobilsk, uh, it's uh, um, not a big uh, city on uh, near Lugansk, it may be to, uh, 200 uh, kilometers uh, from Lugansk. Uh, after that, we made a new brand, Good Library, Library of Freedom, uh, and uh, it's a creative open space for all people. Uh, and we organized uh, educational projects, uh, meetups, uh, English speak clubs, uh, silent parties, 
charity events, festivals, uh, and so on. It's our Yuri, and uh, it, uh, there are many kids on English Cup clubs uh, and mothers of the, these children. And uh, after uh, 2022, uh, we, um, we left our home. Uh, for three months, uh, we were busy creating a new space. We call it Wandering Library. Uh, and our mission is to help librarians and uh, patrons who live uh, under Russian occupation, informated and psychological support, talk about books, experience and new skills. Uh, it's our events uh, on uh, different countries, our services online and offline, uh, courses of Ukrainian language literacy, uh, programming courses, code club for children and teenagers, computer literacy uh, club, yoga, uh, methodological support for librarians, discussion and creating uh, the destroyed mural. Also, together with volunteering, we organize the fundraising for the military. Uh, we raise found for drones, cars, um, and uh, thermal visual cameras. And uh, it's uh, uh, my colleagues, Vitaly and uh, Alexander. Uh, Alexander is a psychologist and Vitaly is CEO. Uh, and now they um, are fighting for Ukrainian independence. Um, and uh, 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 some uh, of our fundraising uh, is for them because we want to um, have a dream that uh, one day they come back at home and, uh, and, and become a psychologist and CEO again. And uh, in uh, 1967, fantastic English rock band, uh, the Beatles released the single All You Need Is Love. And um, the Brain Epstein, the band's manager, said that it's a clear message saying the love is everything. And uh, yeah, it's true. And uh, uh, all we need uh, now, uh, all uh, need uh, Ukrainian people uh, is uh, weapons, uh, is victory and uh, warmth of, of our homes. And um, of course, we are come back uh, at home uh, for Lugansk region and our native library. And I thank God for this experience and uh, this pain because uh, they help us to make another uni unique library and uh, I'm proud of it. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia, for your uh, presentation. Um, I think Katya is next. And yes, feel free to type in your questions. Hello, everyone. Uh, you know, uh, more than one year ago, we meet, and uh, I remember that I uh, also sit in this place, and I want to say that, you know, for this year, Ukraine has changed, and uh, Ukrainians also has changed, and I would like to tell you uh, how we change and what we do now in our library. And uh, uh, Ukrainian, as I understand, I... Okay. Ukrainian libraries uh, are coming the difficulties of our time, uh, supporting the informational and uh, educational fronts have become powerful informational advisory, education, uh, social culture support center for IDPs. And um, since the beginning of the full scale invasion of Russia army into Ukraine, the library has organized a number of activities aimed and creating conditions for developing 
uh, the potential and strengthening the capacity of internally displaced person who stay in our city. In this slide, you can see uh, our photos one year ago, and really one year ago, all library, all libraries in Ukraine and all librarians in Ukraine uh, were like a volunteer center. A volunteer and each of us try to, to do what we can. And in particular, since Empress Les, uh, the library has been running a general library promotion, a library of the territory of the goodness. It's a free entry to the library of a internally displaced person with the, the issue of an annual reader's ticket. Since the start of the campaign, uh, 440 CIDP users have registered in the library. Since the beginning of Russia armed aggression against Ukraine, more than 1,200 IDPs have visited the library. Since July, the cultural and uh, uh, artistical project uh, a child is at the center of the universe has been implemented the organization and holding of events for families who rested in the health camp Yamariupol family. A group of library workers visited a health camp for Mariupol citizens three times a month, which was located in the village near Vinica district. Every time the library staff conducted a presentation of books and no, uh, novelty of Ukrainian uh, literature, uh, uh, literary, historical, local history, music quizzes, board, interactive mobile games, workshops, creative drawing platform, location of beauty and something like aqua makeup. Since August, uh, since August, uh, the club for IDP's name in Ukraine, Yedini, uh, has started working on the basis of the library. The club was created for the purpose of uniting internally displaced persons for joint projects, solving problematic issues, obtaining legal and psychological assistance, provide them, providing them with comfortable condition from communication and sharing experience, and providing library service. Various activities were held within the club for IDPs, women and their children. Training cycle overcoming trauma, uh, a technique of healing I aimed at providing psychological help to people who were affected by war events in Ukraine was held in the library. Trainers discuss with participants their reaction to the stress of war, how to normalize correctly and which methods will help in uh, this. Uh, also, as you have had with, from my colleagues, we also have English and Ukrainian language study uh, clubs uh, in regular, uh, regularly in our library. Uh, family meeting of the NGO Ukrainian Family Foundation for families of IDPs in Vinica are held on the basis of the library. Heavily meetings pr uh, primarily help families get to know each other and the residents of the uh, city. As a part of the Voices uh, of Living History project implemented since uh, 2018, the library has collected more than 30 oral history testimonies of internally displayed person. In January, in January, uh, 2023, uh, the children's and space was opening in the library for children in the Krajopol community of the basis of the public library of Krajopol Settlement Council. With the support of the Crash uh, Humanitarian Organization, Men in Trouble, and the cooperation of the Vinic Regional YAS Center Quadrat. The following were brochures for the center, bookshelves, a library chair, a music column, an electric piano, a flip chart, a laptop, a TV, beanbag chairs, lead lamps, a, a powerful battery, electric uh, con convectors, and stainery. 
And in the end, I would like to say that the library now acts as so uh, as co-working space because we have everything necessary for work: tables with computers, headphones, flip charts, projects, etc. In addition to work training, presentation, business meeting, online training, workshop, and etc., uh, can be held uh, there if necessary. And the library provides access to distance uh, studying. Uh, and in all Ukraine. And I would like to say to also thank you for opportunity to tell our experience and thank you for our support. Slava Ukraini. Slava Ukraini. Um, I think I'm going to hand over to Olha now, who is at Harvard and Olha is here. Hello, everyone. Um, so I am, uh, first of all, I'm monitoring the question and answer. And I would like uh, all the participants again to type their question directly into the question and, and answer so we can answer them um, alive. So we are still waiting for the answer to come. Um, so I would like uh, to start <laughs> with, with the questions and uh, as Oksana mentioned before, we had a presentation a year a year ago, and uh, we were reminded today again how the library responded uh, to the war at the very beginning of the full-scale uh, invasion. Um, so that the, what are the priorities now? Do they change? How they change? Uh, in comparison to, to the year before, to the spring of 2022? Thank you. Uh, it's very interesting uh, question uh, because uh, uh, often I um, I receive uh, uh, similar question. Um, uh, I think uh, that uh, um, our library today uh, um, have uh, priorities to work with uh, uh, displaced persons, uh, uh, with uh, uh, information literacy, uh, with uh, uh, digital education skills, uh, uh, maybe maybe uh, there are uh, the uh, there are pri pri priorities for our libraries but maybe my colleagues uh, uh, have uh, another uh, things about uh, it Nastya Katya Może щось додасте Frankly speaking, I don't hear all question, just the end of question. If it's not a problem, can you repeat, please? Absolutely. Я також можу сказати українською мовою, як змінилися ваші пріоритети? Ви розповіли про свої власні бібліотеки. Чим вони займалися на початку повномасштабного вторгнення? І, очевидно, ці пріоритети були негайні. Ви, ви, ви провадили такий сервіс для людей, які потребували абсолютної негайної допомоги, але як ці пріоритети змінилися і як ваша робота змінилася тепер через рік після повномасштабного вторгнення? Дякую. Okay, uh, I will try to answer for this question. Uh, you know, before the war, we, we were all librarians. We work with uh, books, with phones, with our uh, users. Yes, we um, work with our bases online, uh, uh, electronic bases, I mean, and you know, after the war, frankly speaking, all we change our priorities because uh, library become place where people come and ask for, for help, for example, and uh, where we gather people from diff uh, different corner of our country. And we began to work of the 
because of their needs. I can say that, yes, if people want psychological help, we organize for them a psychological training. If people wanted to study language, okay, here we give you a volunteer who will study your language. If people want to study our um, electronic, I mean, uh, 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 media literacy training or another, okay, we will help. If you want to uh, have a meeting with lawyer, we do this. Uh, we communicate with our participants, I mean, with, with our users now, most of them, not only IDPs, you know, people who live in, for example, in Venice, in Kyiv, in another city, they also have changed and they have changed their priorities. And people come for, uh, to library not for most, not mostly for book, but for help or some information, something like this. Um, and uh, uh, in our libraries, uh, the biggest part of our um, activities it's um, volunteering and uh, uh, organize a fundraising, a military fundraising for, uh, for um, Ukrainian army. And uh, uh, our um, big uh, fundraising is, uh, was um, for Mavic, it's a drone. Uh, I don't know uh, how it was on uh, uh, dollars, but uh, for Grimnas, it's very, it's very uh, big. Um, maybe 93,000 uh, of grivnas. It's uh, many, a lot of money. Uh, and uh, other part of our um, work is uh, yoga. Uh, we have uh, yoga uh, online and offline for um, uh, migrants. And uh, also we uh, communicate with our uh, 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 our um, readers maybe uh, who um, live in Starobilsk, uh, but uh, uh, another um, day they left occupied territory and live uh, in other countries. And we uh, um, organized uh, meetups uh, and uh, in uh, Google Meet and uh, make yoga, speaking. Uh, and after that, uh, we uh, organized uh, Ukrainian uh, clubs, uh, Ukrainian language clubs uh, for migrants, and uh, it's um, it's necessary because uh, uh, people want to speak uh, um, speak Ukrainian. And uh, um, in my um, club, I uh, I teach uh, a seventy five years woman uh, who who want to speak English, uh, speak Ukrainian, and uh, it's necessary for, for her uh, because um, she wanted to, to be Ukrainian and uh, yeah, and I help uh, her uh, in this. And uh, I have um, a woman, um, she is Russian, but um, she married on Ukraine and lived many years in Ukraine. And uh, she never speak uh, in Ukrainian, but uh, she understand. And uh, uh, first lessons, uh, she um, write some words, uh, some phrases uh, for Ukrainian, and go for a shop and try to speak. And uh, it's um, I own it for her. It's uh, it's wonderful, and uh, it's uh, the biggest part of our work now. Uh, and one more very important thing, um, as I uh, say, uh, currently there is no place in Ukraine that is uh, completely safe. Uh, and uh, mm, uh, libraries should be safe places. We adapt, we organize uh, our work in shelters. And air alarms are quite long. Sometimes uh, uh, several times a day uh, and so long. Uh, so librarians and people in bomb shelters read, uh, uh, recite poems, uh, play board games, and uh, many, many uh, different think, uh, things. Uh, and in my library, the Kyiv Polytechnic Institute, we decided to make a shelter in our basement 
uh, uh, we removed all books and shelves from the book storage. Uh, there are uh, about uh, 600 square meters. Uh, and uh, now we work to create a um, shelter as a smart uh, multifunctional uh, space for comfortable uh, studying uh, for our uh, teachers, professors, students. Uh, uh, for comfortable studying uh, under any conditions. Shelters uh, are very important, of course, now. Thank you. Um, so now we have some questions from the audience. And the first one is from Yuri Horodnichenko asking, do you have backup generators in libraries? So all of you can answer this question. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, uh, generators in our libraries. Of course, uh, uh, not all libraries uh, have generators, but, but we, we have, of course. And um, there are um, a point of... Um, uh, how it say Nastya, точки, як це називається, пункти незламності. In 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 English, пункти незламності. I tried. To, we can just explain. In every city, uh, when we have no light, it was a very long priority. Uh, and uh, uh, in uh, each city has a, a special uh, places where people can come and, uh, for example, uh, uh, drink coffee or tea, uh, can have a little electricity, for example, for telephone or laptop and in special uh, uh, places with generation and so on. Uh, it's called uh, unbroken uh, place uh, in in Ukraine. It's uh, uh, situated on uh, cities and uh, some uh, maybe uh, on a, a fire station uh, sometimes or a police station. Uh, it's um, more safe place uh, for people and uh, in these places uh, they uh, can do uh, the, this uh, thing which uh, say it Katja. So-called places of invincibility for it. And in our city, for example, there are many uh, libraries who uh, which have such place. <laughs> Thank you so much. So next question from Natalia. Thank you for your presentation and commitment to work under these circumstances. What are the plans for summer in your libraries? Are you planning to introduce new projects? And do you have additional resources from the communities for this? Katya, Nastya, about your libraries, maybe. OK, you know, um... Uh, about our uh, summer plan, <laughs> uh, if everything will be okay, and uh, uh, we will work uh, in uh, with our main goals, with our participants, and about a new project, frankly speaking, uh, I think, and uh, NISTA and uh, all colleagues, uh, we always uh, looking for different projects, for different new projects. Uh, really, we we need money, we need support, we need um, mentor support, not only money, yes, because we work with people and we work by ourselves and we have no special financial side or for working with our new um, 
projects, for example, yeah, and we have many people who uh, come and ask, as I said before, yes, and uh, for example, uh, nowadays uh, I uh, write one project. My, co uh, my colleagues also write uh, one project in another topic because we always looking for uh, uh, for this support. It's very necessary for us and for people which we work with. Thank you. So next, uh, uh, um, our library uh, is communicate with uh, our colleagues in uh, uh, Ushgorod. It's a city on the west of uh, Ukraine, and uh, we collaborate some project. Uh, and I. Uh, um, uh, have a photo on the presentation. We make a mural on Ushgorod. That mural was in Starobilsk, but after war, Russian soldiers destroyed it, and we make a new mural in Ushgorod. And after that, we have a big project uh, it's a rendering exhibition it's a photo exhibition of uh, starobilsk and uh, we um, prepare uh, its exhibition in uh, uh, in cities in Ukraine. It's Ushgorod, uh, it's Lviv, uh, and now we prepare uh, for uh, this photo uh, for Kiev, uh, for uh, Dnipro and Cherkasy. Uh, and uh, it's project about uh, Ukrainian uh, East uh, for our city, and it's a street photo. Uh, our colleagues, uh, because they are photographer uh, and uh, they make a good photo. And um, after that, uh, we speak with migrants um, on our city because uh, they live uh, lived uh, in uh, all. Ukraine or all big cities of Ukraine and um, we make some uh, meetups with Gita, with, uh, with Sineson uh, and uh, after that uh, uh, we uh, um, bought these photos and uh, all monies uh, we uh, gathered and um, some uh, buy some uh, uh, military scenes for our colleagues or uh, another uh, group. Thank you. Um, so next question um, is, a, uh, is again a question from Yuri and he asked, do you have free access to online subscription from major publishers such as Elsewhere, Wiley and similar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, some international scientific publishers have provided free access to their databases for Ukrainian researchers and universities uh, uh, now um, at uh, the, my uh, at my university now we have access to science direct from Elsevier to Springer Nature uh, to uh, many different uh, resources um, uh, through um, uh, Research for Life project. Uh, uh, we have access to um, uh, Association Computing Machinery Library, Digital Library, uh, uh, to uh, Cambridge University Press Journals, and uh, we work with uh, the Rapid ILL service from Clearweight, uh, from Clearweight, and uh, it's very, very important for our researchers, for our professors, it's, uh, yeah. Thank you. So another question is from Savita Pari. She's from India and she asks about the open access resources. So do your library provide those open access resources for the researchers or online courses um, that would be available for researchers? Yeah, of course, uh, we know and we work uh, many years, uh, maybe for, since uh, 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 20, uh, 
uh, I don't remember which, uh, which uh, year, but more than 10 years we work with open access uh, uh, resources uh, at our uh, universities, uh, uh, our institutions, uh, uh, and uh, now uh, in Ukraine, uh, uh, open science uh, uh, is uh, is uh, very quickly developed. Uh, I, I I think um, uh, last year uh, our. Um, Ministry uh, of Science, Education, and Science, or Science and uh, sorry, and Science and Education, uh, um, uh, launched a national a national plan of open science, and uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, researchers and Ukrainian government. Uh, uh, have uh, a special plan to, uh, to integrate uh, to European research uh, space. And open access, uh, of course, we use and we create this content too. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I don't see any more open um, questions in the Q&A um, section. Um, I would like to, again, use this opportunity and to ask uh, myself a question, looking into the future. You have this horrible experience of war and the work of the library during this, and we know that uh, Ukraine will be victorious, there will be a peaceful time. So when you look into the future, how do you apply this experience and how do you see your libraries um, in the future? Thank you. Thank you. If to see to the future, you know, uh, first of all, we need to be alive and healthy. And I think that we will share our um, uh, our area of work, I mean, because uh, we have changed it, yes, and I think future also will change it us in different, it's a de develop of information and frankly speaking, for us, for Ukrainian, it's different to see in future because we don't know what will be tomorrow. But if everything will be okay, sure, we will uh, win. And uh, after the winner, uh, we, um, you know, library will be, from, from my opinion, a library uh, will be like a, um, a hub for people when we can uh, to feel people to understand people to hear people not just uh, you know as people uh, imagine library it's something connect with books but now we show that we have many uh, opportunities uh, to work with people not just to give book for uh, reading and I think it's also a good experience for Ukrainian library and librarians because really we we study every day. We learn something new. We listen to our colleagues from all Ukrainian, and we try to uh, have uh, the same point in uh, work with people. Yes, most of all now working with IDPs. It's very a uh, big and hard uh, um, category of participants, but. Uh, as uh, as our uh, life uh, for one year show, it's, there are no problem to work with them, and uh, we have a great cooperation. And I think in future library um, will uh, will have a higher level in our country because we we grow we grow every day. And uh, I um, have uh, some. Um... Mind. In my mind, uh, the library in the future is a place uh, for all people. And uh, uh, for me, uh, it's an uh, inclusion uh, space. Um, and for mothers, for, uh, for, for fathers, parents, and uh, of course, uh, for uh, veterans. Uh, because uh, maybe 
third part of uh, Ukrainian people is uh, veterans and uh, they uh, they want to speak, they uh, want to um, talk about uh, for, for, for their experience, for, uh, for their um, skills and uh, I think uh, uh, working with veterans is, is very important on the future. Uh, of course, it's volunteering. Uh, because uh, all Ukrainian libraries uh, is volunteering a uh, big volunteering hub. Uh, it's uh, it's necessary. Um, uh, th this work is uh, very necessary uh, and uh, for citizens. And uh, of course, it's reading and uh, talk about books. Uh, but. Uh, mm, uh, in you, uh, may, maybe new projects uh, of reading. Uh, I think I, I don't know uh, what uh, it's mean, but I think uh, uh, reading is necessary, and uh, um, some uh, project with kids and uh, with veterans and uh, migrants. Uh, I think, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to thank you all. I want to thank Oksana and Anastasia and Katerina for, for your presentation and for sharing this story with us, professional, but also very personal. And you showed us how the library spaces, library services could be transformed into something totally different under such an enormous pressure. And you also proved that the libraries are indeed indispensable part of the society. And I want to thank you for that all. And we obviously express our wholehearted support uh, for all of you. And uh, I wanted to thank everybody who attended this event. Uh, I wanted to thank Andy and Olha uh, who helped me with the organization of this event. And uh, I am not in the business of predicting future because I'm a librarian and I'm pragmatic, but based on your resilience, your positive attitude, in the face of stark adversity and the services which are essential to the, your population that you continue to provide, I am pretty sure that Ukraine will be victorious at end. And uh, I would end this event by saying, and if I get in trouble, so be it. Slava Ukraine, uh, Heroyam Slava. Uh, I wish you all the best and thank you for coming through for us uh, and uh, letting us know what's happening in your libraries, your part of the world, and how you're dealing with heroically with uh, these circumstances. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. Um, I will be ending this webinar now. And thank you again. And take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.